a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. I'm so excited to have Jason Van Orden on the show today. How are you, Jason? I'm doing just fine, Linda. So nice to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here. I've been a fan of your Internet Business Mastery podcast for a long time. You're actually one of the pioneers in this industry and deserve so much respect and just pats on the back for the service that you've done to get people into the Internet space. And I just want to say thank you for that. Wow, I appreciate that. That's so nice of you. Yeah. I mean, it's very gratifying to hear that. I, I mean, appreciate truly, it. you're you know you you were one of the first, and I talk to people about what a great opportunity it is right now to create a business because of the internet and because of the low expenses. It's just an amazing time to create a business. Tell us what you think about being an entrepreneur right now. Yeah, I mean, it's so it is very exciting. The, the you know the barrier to entry has lowered, and I mean, look, there's. Here's one of the things I love talking about is the fact that right now human knowledge is doubling at a rate of once a year, which is staggering when you consider, like, go back to the Gutenberg Press, which is one of those big forward momentum moments in human knowledge. And even back then, so we're talking like, I think it was like 15 something. I mean, I'm not a historian, don't quote me, but it was like 15 something, 16 something that that press came out. And back then, you know, that proliferated knowledge because now you could print more easily. But even then, human knowledge was only doubling like every 250 years. Um, And go back 50 years, and it was still like taking 25 five years to do well now obviously with the internet and mobile technology and computers microcomputers global economy i mean bam like things are just so the point that i want to make there is like that proliferation of knowledge creates so much opportunity to then recombine take that knowledge i like it's like alchemy right you can just take this stuff and make value almost seemingly out of nothing for people and the number of problems in the world or needs and desires that people have just uh, are exploding as well. And the internet now makes it so easy to connect with whatever audience, I like to use the word audience, that you feel like you can serve and and discover something that they need and come up with a very specific solution to those problems that then overall improves the lives of, you know, improves people's lives, whether that's helping them be more more happy, more productive, whatever the case may be. And, you know, what a wonderful way to elevate the world is to be an entrepreneur and use entrepreneurial alchemy to create... Um, new solutions for, for very hyper-specific pieces of, of the world that we live on. Oh, and yes, absolutely. And it's such an amazing time to be alive. How did you, you've been doing this for 12 years. How did you get into this and how did you see this opportunity right away? Yeah, well, I, you know, I wish I could say I saw it right away. Well, I guess I, there was a moment where I saw an opportunity and I took it, but uh, I'll try to condense this down. It's a little bit of a, a circuitous path, but I, I started out my career, you know, my professional career as an engineer, software engineer, you know, in a cubicle, thinking I was just going to do the work until I'm, uh, you know, retired and, and then I'll enjoy some degree of freedom at that point. Um, you know, very quickly realized this is not for me. I, things are just, you know, that's, I like calling it the Sunday night dread. <laughs> Where, you know, it was like I'd realize, oh, I got to get up and go back to work. And that was just becoming uh, intolerable. And so this is where I started looking for other options and eventually came across a book by the name of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which maybe a number of people have heard of or come across. I mean, since then, we've had the four hour work week or the hundred dollar startup, you know, but there's always there's those books that inspire us and show us the possibilities. Right. And for me, that was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, and so it got it planted in my mind, you know what, either you can be an investor or a business owner. That's how you have more freedom as opposed to being like an employee and selling your time. And so I, I went looking for other options and ended up dabbling in real estate investing for a little while. 
again, it was not a good fit for me, but it was one more step in my path. Um, now in hindsight, I can see where it wasn't well suited to my strengths. I, and I, I don't like being on the phone all the time. I'm not necessarily like a deal maker and a salesman. And those are all things that were required to do well in real estate investing. However, during that time, because of I was you know consuming all these CDs and and books and seminars around real estate investing, and this was introducing me without knowing it at first to the world of information marketing. You know, packaging your knowledge yes. up and selling it. Um, and back then, it was done through the mail and through seminars like the internet. So this is like two thousand three, two thousand four. The internet's just kind of e commerce was just really kind of becoming a thing. And so I, I saw an, so one of the first opportunities I did see that really started changing things for me was that I had, I guess you could call it a mastermind, an informal group of friends where we would get together. We were all newbie real estate investors sharing our progress and we would chat like, Hey, what's working? What's, what are you problems are you running into? And they were often bringing up questions around marketing, how to find leads to do their real estate deals. So how to find buyers and sellers of houses so they could put these creative real estate deals together. So that was going on. Parallel to that, I was also studying marketing quite a bit because of being in a, a band as a musician. And you know, I also had kind of this dream of maybe I can be a professional musician. I was a guitar player. My wife was a singer. We were in a band together. And I discovered a, I love marketing, and B, I'm actually pretty good at it. You know, just reading lots of books about it and programs. And I had started studying direct marketing. You know, sending out mail that gets people to directly respond and find leads for whatever business you had. So I started sharing the stuff with my friends, and like, well, that's really insightful and interesting. So essentially, I saw an opportunity to offer something to uh, an audience, again, going to what I said earlier, a specific audience that I understood that saw you know, a need to help them with their marketing skills. And the, combine that with figuring out this information marketing, I thought, why not? I'm going to try doing a seminar. Let's see if this works. So I rented a room at a, com a community college. Um, I had a list of about 80 people by putting my network locally together. And I did my very first product launch. And this was through the mail. So this is before, you know, even product launches online. But essentially, I was sending a sequence of messages out to try to get people to sign up for $200 to sit in a room for eight hours and get a mind dump of direct marketing knowledge around, you know, specifically for real estate investors. And I sold that thing out. And I didn't know that I was going to sell it out, but it sold 25 people, $5,000. And that moment, uh, you know, five thousand dollars in one day. I helped sold a little bit at the end, eight thousand gross, and I was like, "Wow, okay, I'm an information marketer. That's <laughs> that's it. I'm no longer a real estate investor. I'm an information marketer." A new marketer. career was born. <laughs> a new career was born. I knew enough to record that seminar. You know, I'd learned from Dan Kennedy um, from one of his programs back then. You know, do it mul You know, do it once and then keep making money off of it multiple times. So I packaged that thing up as a set of six CDs and a manual with all my slides and stuff. Again, physical through the mail. And I sold it locally through my network for a while, but I maxed out uh, at some point. And I was like, oh, I need to find another way. This isn't going to be a business if I can't find more people to buy this. That's what took me to the internet to like find more people. And there, there was no social media or blogging was barely a thing. Uh, essentially, I was posting in forums, posting articles in forums with a byline at the bottom and people would find it and buy my program. And I remember getting the very first, somebody I didn't know from anywhere, buying this through PayPal. I got the, you got money email from PayPal and going, <laughs> holy cow, like this really works. This is awesome. Um, and so I just always keeping my ear to the ground about other ways to promote myself online. And beginning of 2005 is when I saw the word podcasting inside of one of the newsletters I was subscribed to. It was actually wow. a, for market. It was actually marketing for a musician. So I was still dabbling with the music thing, but podcasting showed up in one of those new newsletters. It's like, what is that? So I Googled it and Google said, did you mean, and tried to correct me because Google <laughs> didn't know what podcasting was yet. <laughs> and hilarious. I was like, wow. Okay. But I did find eventually a few blog posts in the recesses of the internet about, you know, very techy, geeky blog posts about MP3 enclosures and RSS 2.0 specifications. Thankfully, A, I was an engineer, so I understood the tech, and B, I was a, you know, musician and had some audio background, so I understood the audio, and I was a marketer, so all of a sudden this light bulb went off. I was like, you know what? 
let's look a couple years down the road. I think people could use this for marketing. I think this could be a channel for information marketing and selling your services and your knowledge and, and your products, right? So I made a decision. I was like, you know what? I'm not too keen on real estate investing anyway. I want to be the business podcasting dude. Wow. And so, and I'm making it sound like this is all like, one realization after the other. I'll tell you what, like there, it was ups and downs and miss, you know, misfires. And is this really going to work? And, and, you know, eventually coming around. And so, I I mean, I mean, that's realistic, but the thing is, is what I loved is that you were in, you were eager and in search of what knowledge you needed to get to the next step. And that I was at least continually seeking. Yes. And you were motivated and then you paid attention to taps on the shoulder. I call it that, you know, actually the universe gives us those taps on the shoulder and tells us something. Absolutely. And so you saw that word podcast and your unique background, what I love is that the musician and the engineer and the marketing all came together and was perfect for podcasting and for you to take it in this other direction that you ran with. And that's, wow, that is so profound. Love it. Yep. So there you go. I mean, that's how I got online. That's how I got into podcasting. Um, I started a few podcasts just because I like, well, I better have some podcasts if I'm going to teach podcasting. And um, I did become, uh, you know, a, a podcast business podcasting expert. Within a year, I had a book published. I was speaking on stages. Um, I was doing consulting. I had a two thousand um, dollar what do you call it, an uh, online course at the time about starting a podcast. But one of the podcasts I started became Internet Business Mastery. And that also, it was the very first podcast about internet marketing. And within a couple of years, we could realize, you know, our audience was asking for, for more. It was growing very quickly. And that became a business as well. And so eventually I, I went all in on that. I was like, you know what, let's just see what we can do with this business and grow it. Um, as big as possible. And that's, you know, until recently has been my primary business um, until about a year and a half ago when I you know, started sidestepping a bit. But that's in a nutshell, my, my journey online. That is so inspirational, Jason. That's amazing. And you have accomplished so much. And I'm just excited for your next phase. So tell us what that is. What are you working on now? Yeah, so after a decade of of being online, you can imagine, or just doing something, you imagine like you're, you're gonna hit. The, we all have those points where it's like, oh, okay, something's not, something's missing, something's not quite right. It's time for a shift. It's time for a new challenge. It's time for whatever. And um, you know, a culmination of a few things was definitely. I'll go with your phrase. The tap on the shoulder was starting to happen again. Um, I lived in France. I took my wife and my child, my kid, uh, who's now four years old. We lived in France for a year, which was like the pinnacle goal of lifestyle design that I imagined for myself when I got started down this path. So it was like I'd reached this pinnacle goal. Uh, my business had been around for a decade. Um, you know, and, and I was now a parent. So it was just like this natural time of going like, okay, I could start feeling a little bit the what's next. And, um, and again, very circuitous path. And I'll just fast forward to the end. I realized, you know, I really, with all this experience of being online and all I've learned after years and years of launching programs online, you know, growing a podcast audience, um, you know, building my own personal brand as an expert multiple times, you know, as a first real estate direct marketing guy, then as a podcasting guy, and then as a, you know, internet business guy. Um, I was like, you know, that's what I want to do is I want to help more people become influencers and this kind of ties back into that knowledge doubling thing. It's like, look, if knowledge is doubling that fast and along with it, all the problems we need to solve, like the world needs more self-made influencers is what I call them. And, and that's the opportunity that we have with the internet. 15 years ago, you had to be an academic. You had to be like on mainstream media, had to have a best-selling book in order to be the quote unquote expert. Now with the internet in the last 10 years, I mean, we see it all the time, the YouTube star, the podcasting guru, the whatever, right? And, and so I love the idea of having helped people become in whatever their hyper-specific market or niche is uh, an authority and be able to really have an immense impact and, and, you know, also make a good living themselves doing that. So now what I do is I work with, with influencers, people who have that message that they want to get out there. And the specific thing I like to help them do is turn their knowledge and expertise into online programs so that they can scale their impact and their income. Like there's only so much you can do with let's say one-on-one consulting work or, or facilitating or workshops or speaking and books. Whereas, you know, if you can then start packaging up into a variety of other things like 
um, you know, productizing your services and online programs, then, um, you know, that's where your message and everything can get out to a wider audience. You can have a, a suite of offerings. So every person that comes into your world can kind of self-select into just the right thing that they're ready for that you're offering and then move themselves up through your world, through your business to higher levels of impact and income that they're paying you to reach, to receive that value from you. And so I just love helping influencers get very clear on the, the positioning and the packaging and promotion of their online programs so they can maximize what I call LTI or lifetime impact and income per customer. Um, cause I think if you focus on that one thing, that's how you maximize your, um, your legacy as well as your, your own lifestyle and income as well. That's right. And so many people have spent their whole life learning some, you know, niche or some profession and they have so much knowledge. And, you know, the crazy thing is when we were years ago back in this emerging internet space, it was, it seemed like it was all about technology. It seemed like it was about the software and the technology. And now it's really flipped and it's about the information and it's about what do you have to teach? What's the unique information that you have to share? And I love that you're helping people do that because they can get out of the corporate space and they can start something on their own and impact literally millions of people around the world because as you know, now every podcast is global, business is global. I mean, it's just such a different world. So tell us how, tell us the first step of how someone would start with their MTI. So the thing that... To, no, sorry, the LTI. LTI, long-term, right. Long-term this, income. Yeah, long, income. so the only, like the main thing that you need, to, not the only thing, but the main thing you have to have to start with is being very, very clear about what audience you want to serve or that you already are serving. And, and you know, a lot of times when I do work with clients, they have maybe been doing, either they're an author or they have done some one-on-one -on -one work. So they, they have a pretty good idea. Um, and, you know, often they're like getting a lot of referral business. So they know what they're doing is valuable. They know that they're making an impact. But now they need, you know, as they start extending themselves to new channels, especially through the Internet, now they're starting to reach out to people who aren't coming through those nice, you know, warm lead type um you know, venues or, or channels, you know, it's like when you have a referral, somebody kind of trusts you almost immediately. But when you're using like, uh, you know, you're going and posting on Huffington Post or you're going and, you know, just launching uh, a campaign on Facebook, you have to really have your messaging dialed in. And there's two pieces to that. There's resonant. Uh, well, let's start with relevance. There's relevance and then there's resonance. And relevance is really knowing um, how to empathize with your audience and how to be very knowing the exact um, problems and pains or desires that you're solving or fulfilling for them. And even more importantly, and this is where resonance comes in, uh, the language that they use to describe those things and what it is they're out there actively looking for and ready and willing to spend money for. And there's ways to do this market research and interviews and surveys to figure out what, um, you know, what it is that your market wants. I always say, you know, hook them with what they want, but then you can also give them what they need because often there, there is that need to kind of educate them on what they'll also need in addition to what they think they want. But you always, as a, a marketer, which you need to think of yourself at some level as a marketer, you need to enter a conversation that's already going on in their mind. And so that means literally being able to like almost read their mind and empathize in a way that you stand out in all the noise because what you are saying and offering is so highly relevant to what they're wanting right now and so resonant in the language that, they, they, that you use that they're thinking, man, it's like you're reading my mind. You know exactly what I'm going through that it's like an immediate... Um, hey, tell me more. It's an immediate like, hey, let's. I want to. Uh, what else do you got for me? And they're immediately ready to start like clicking and opting in and and moving down that path with you. Um, in twelve years of being online, the noise level has gotten a lot bigger. So in that sense, that has raised the difficulty and the, the raised the bar in terms of how to stand out. But the good news is there's so many powerful channels. Um, and so many powerful ways to get into the mind of the audience that you want to serve that, um, you know, if you're willing to do the work and do it the right way, you can stand out in that top 1% of, uh, of the people making all this noise online and, and get more attention, the more attention that you need, that your business needs in order to um, grow. So that's step one. Who's your audience? Let's get into their mind. Let's empathize and understand what it is that they really need and want and uh, be clear about that. And I think one of the best ways to do that is often the audience we're serving is 
if you think about it, it's often either a past version of ourselves or a present version of ourselves or some combination. You're either helping people on a journey that you've already been through or taking people along with you on a journey that you're both going through, which immediately gives you a leg up and understanding and empathizing with where they're at and helps you be more relevant and resonant. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think some people either aren't sure what their message is or they aren't sure uh, what people really want, what people really want to buy, because they sometimes think about what people might need to buy. But you're right. People buy what they want to buy, not what they need. Right. So you have to uh, make it attractive for them to want to purchase it and then make sure that they're getting also what they need. So what would be the second step for people? So the second step for people is once you've identified that once you've identified that audience that you want to serve best, you want to then, I mean, like you said, it, it is getting clear about then your, your message. And, and I think this is where people need to, first of all, then find some belief in themselves that they have something unique to, um, to put out there. And I'm not saying like you have to invent the next iPhone or anything, but, um, you've identified your audience, you've identified their pain, you've identified like the outcome that they want. That's going to get them through that problem or pain or fulfill that desire for them. So it's knowing it's like, well, what is the, the, the process or the unique, um, framework that I offer, um, in order to help people get that result. Um, and it might be, I mean, look, if you look at like just the fitness and the diet market, most diets are, are kind of basically the same principles. It's like eat less, move more, you know, treat your body right. And you know, the, those basic things, but there's always like these slight, you know, twists on it, whether it's Zumba attracting people like, Hey, do you love to dance? Right? Like come and dance and have fun. And boom, there's that. Or, you know, there's the get, get slim and trim. And, but the point being is like, there's always kind of this, this twist on those same principles that are what, um, ultimately like kind of help stand out and get the kind of get past the jadedness of your market. Um, and that's really important to recognize that most markets are a bit jaded because there is so much noise out there. There's a lot of like, like their default response to what you have to, what you have to say to them is kind of like mm, been there, seen that, tried that. I don't know. You know, it, it's easier for them to dismiss it just because there's so much coming at them. Yeah. So it's kind of finding just that one tweak in your messaging that has them go, Oh, wait a second. That's a little bit different, or oh, that is like that does fit me better. And let me give a very specific way that people can kind of start finding. Well, well, there's a couple ways that you can find that. Number one is to not be afraid to be uniquely you and, and to put yourself in the process that you teach, because obviously. Nobody, I mean, as as trite as it sounds, nobody has your background, your story, your experiences. And so maybe there's something that you bring to the game that's just going to naturally uh, resonate more with a certain segment uh, of the population, a certain, certain segment of the world. And, you know, with what, 7 billion people in the world, you only need a tiny, tiny fraction of people to resonate with you to make a very healthy impact and um, income. But here's a formula that you can turn to to kind of dial in your, you know, find kind of that jadedness and, and, and really pierce right through it and get the attention of your market. And that is to sit down and use the template of, of, uh, writing a how to headline, you know, the, one of the most popular and effective headlines, subject line or sales page headlines is the how to, you know, such and such, um, because it's promising, like, I'm going to show you how to get this thing that you want. So how to lose 10 pounds, you know, in the next 30 days or whatever the case may be, or, um, you know, how to find more buyers and sellers for your creative real estate uh, deals. Like that's the outcome you're going for, right? But now let's test that out or, or tweak it a little bit more and add on to it without blank. Okay. And what I want to encourage people to do is fill in that blank five or six or even 10 times. And what that's going to force you to do is think about what are those things that your market is tired of hearing of or tired of being to told or that they've tried and it didn't work, or it's just not the right fit for them. And, or they're being underserved because it's not, uh, it's not being offered in quite the right way. So let's take an example here again, going with the fitness market. There's so many different niches and sub niches inside of that. And so you could say like how to lose 10 pounds without giving up bread, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's all this paleo, low carb, and maybe they're tired of that. And they're like, you know what? It's just not realistic. I'm not going to give up bread. 
Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, let's talk about the other things you can do to lose that 10 pounds. I mean, maybe you would lose it faster with that. So, you know, that's going to get somebody's attention because they're like, you know, when it's like how to lose 10 pounds and blah, blah, blah. And they might be like, yeah, been there, done that, whatever. But all of a sudden you're like, oh, without bread or without going to the gym. Some people are just like, look, I'm not going to get out of the house. I don't like having to, you know, worry about how I look or whatever and, you know, and go to the, I don't like having, to, and so, you know, it's like, look, if you can make that promise to them, like help them do it without going to the gym, awesome. Or, hey, maybe it's how to lose 10 pounds without getting too bulky. I know sometimes specifically with women, that's, that's a worry. They're like, look, I want to lose weight. I want to be healthy, but I want to start like bulking up and looking, you know, too muscular. Like that's just, so, that's something that's important to them. So you start filling in the blanks of that without, and you might, you're going to find some tweak or some, you know, again, something that's going to get through that jadedness of your market. And, you know, you may literally use that how to blank without blank as your headline or your catchphrase, but if nothing else, it just kind of helps you. It's a mind, a, a mental model to dial into something to help you stand out in your marketplace. And that's a little bit of a lengthy answer, but it's so important Find the audience and then figure out what is it that you offer that is going to actually stand out in the noise that can be a tweak on the messaging so that the people you ideally want to work with and that are your ideal clients that you can do your best work with will go, oh, wait a second, I need to know more about that because that that resonates with me. I like it because I think you really are helping people stand out and be unique and not sound like everybody else, not just be part of the crowd, but actually to be noticed. Be sure to listen to part two of this interview on our next podcast. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.